Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is Penny Pierce. Penny Pierce is the author of 10 books, including Frequency. And you can find out more about Penny Pierce and her wonderful work at her website, pennypierce.com. And I'm going to spell that for you. It's Penny, P-E-N-N-E-Y, P-E-I-R-C-E.com. Welcome, Penny Pierce. (laughs) Thank you. It's good to be back. So Penny Pierce and I have both published 10 books. And so for our audience, will you share more about some of the other titles that you've written in addition to Frequency? Right. Well, I have a transformation series because that's one of my main topics. Intuition is a big one. So the first book was The Intuitive Way. Then came Frequency. And then leap of perception and then transparency. So those are all sequential, um, you know, expansions on the subject of personal and societal transformation. What is it and how does it work? But I've also written um, two dream books and um, uh, Be the Dreamer, Not the Dream and the Dream Dictionary for Dummies. I wrote a couple dummies books. And um, and I have one called The Present Moment, which is a day book of clarity and intuition. So something for every day to help you develop your intuition. And there are some, um, I call them bits and pieces. There are a lot of my essays and articles and things I've written over the years that are have a lot of good information in them. Fantastic. And for people who are you interested in an intuitive development, you may also be interested in my book called Unlimited Intuition. Uh, what is it? Unlimited Intuition Now. <laughs> I'm looking up at it. <laughs> I've also written 10 books. It's like, okay, what are their names? Who can remember? <laughs> Unlimited Intuition Now, which if you don't like to read, you can listen to the audio book. So Penny Pierce, what we're talking about today is about how to over, how to recover from open heart surgery. And globally, um, cardiovascular disease, heart disease is the number one killer in the world. 17.9 million people pass away every day, uh, sorry, every year, fortunately not every day, from heart disease. And that's globally. So we have a lot to learn from Penny Pierce. So Penny Pierce, would you share for our audience what happened to you? Will you tell us your story? Yeah, I um, I was getting my hair cut one day and the next day I got up in the morning and I felt funny. Uh, I think my intuition helped me a lot here. Uh, I, I was kind of getting dizzy and my heart was beating funny. And I, so I looked up all the heart attack symptoms in women and I had a couple of them, but I called my brother-in-law who is a really great internist. And he said, and it was, was early in the morning and he said, get over to urgent care. I went over there and they did an EKG and sent me to um, the ER. And then they admitted me to cardiac ICU. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I This can't be like, I, you know, I was feeling fine yesterday and I still feel pretty good. I had a acute heart failure, mm. not a heart attack, which is different. I, I learned a heart attack has to do with occluded arteries, you know, where the plaque builds up and stuff, but heart failure is of the valves of the heart muscle and so forth, some sort of dysfunction in the mechanics of the heart itself. And so they d- ran a ton of tests and, and I lo- luckily my sister was able to come and and be here and take care of my dog and, um, and everything. 
right away. And then she and her husband, my brother-in-law, of course, um, are medical people and they've worked and she's worked in hospitals with nutrition and stuff. So they're really a good backup for me. And um, so they, you know, they finally determined that my mitral valve had basically blown open and um, the, you know, and that what happens then is they have this thing called an ejection fraction, which is the amount of blood that gets, gets pumped out of your heart to your organs and the rest of the body. And mine was so low that what happens, the organs start to, um, well, the cells die. Hmm. And then the organs shut down and you could die like quickly. And from that, luckily mine was not at that point, but I was told later if I had waited another day, I would have died. So thank you, intuition. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I, I got in there and then they needed to figure out if I was strong enough for the surgery. So they had more tests and I was literally I had catheters in both arms I had a thing in my neck I had like unbelievable wiring you know up so like like Frankenstein or something but when I first found out it was kind of like this disbelief it, I, I kept thinking this is a weird dream like reality has become a dream I don't I this is not on my radar screen for for my healthy, contributory life that I'm doing, you know? Um, so this was back in March. So about five months ago or so. Um, and this is March, 2023. We're talking about. Right. Right. And um, so uh, it was 11 days before I was ready for the surgery, I guess. And, and it, I stopped eating. I didn't feel like eating. I don't know why, but I didn't miss it. And I just, my attitude was um, just to stay positive. And I wasn't trying to make myself stay positive. I just was um, embracing the situation and I was appreciating the nurses and the doctors that were going to work with me came in and I had a good sense about them. You know, I, I really got a good intuitive hit on the surgeon and they were warm hearted and competent. You could just feel it. You know, they knew what they were doing. So I was very, I just felt lucky mm -hmm. the whole way through. And so um, I wasn't worried, but I, it didn't occur to me that anything was really serious. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but um, anyway, so eventually, you know, the, the day came and it it actually, funnily enough, was on March 22nd, which a lot of people are saying now that is was a portal day or some kind of thing where there was a beginning of a new kind of shift or lift in consciousness that day. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on the internet about it, um, but that was the day. <laughs> and I, I gather I was in surgery. I went in at 8.30 in the morning, came out at 3.30 in the afternoon and had to have two transfusions. And I think there was some trouble that no one told me about during the surgery. Um, but, you know, they have to stop your, they cut your, saw open your bone and then pull the muscles apart and then have to stop your heart and they have to get a clear field of with no blood so they can do the surgery and then they have to start your heart again <laughs> with shock and and glue the bone back together and then they put little wire connections in there and um you know and i was just out of it i didn't have any exciting near-death experiences or anything <laughs> um so when i came back from and came out of the the um, anesthesia, or and it was on some kind of painkiller, and there was this big machine next to me that's called an impella, which is like I guess it's like a fancy, powerful um, pacemaker to help in the beginning to keep things going, but it would groan, you know, 
in its cycle, it wouldn't earn it. starting up, it would make this noise. But I was hearing it speaking to me in English. <laughs> and uh, and then it said, hold cash, hold cash. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm getting investment advice from on high, you know. <laughs> so, and I kept saying to the nurses, are you hearing that? No, Penny, it's just the machine. Anyway, um, so I guess I was kind of entertaining myself in some fashion. But um, I just maintained that attitude. And I looked for what to appreciate in the nurses and the help and the, all the people who came in day and night to take tests and x-rays and everything. And of course, part of it is you get, I got water on the lungs a lot and I couldn't breathe into the lower part of my lungs. So they do a thoracentesis, which they poke a needle through the back of your rib cage and drain out this big bottle of stuff came out of me. And then I, I could breathe again. So there was so much involved and it was all compacted into three weeks. And then when I got out, um, there's a lot of rules. You can't do anything to endanger the wound. And um, no reaching, no bending. You have to sleep on your back. You can't drive. You have to hold a, a pillow, a special heart pillow they give you to keep yourself from going into any kind of um, getting bumped. And um, so my sister took all the dishes that we might need and put them on a table for me. And we did all kinds of things around the house where I, I didn't have to reach up and a stool in the, you know, in the shower, you know, all these things. Um, but it was very strict. And um, I followed that. It goes for quite a while. Then the, the PT and OT people come in and give you exercises and things that you're supposed to do. They come in every couple of days. So it was a discipline and I would get to a point where I was thinking, all right, I'm feeling a little better now. When is this going to be over? <laughs> you know, I'm ready to get back to my normal routine and rhythm. And no, it was, you know, and then I would, I just would crash out and sleep for long times and just different stuff, you know, and um, it took a while to even get up to walk or to get up off of, of a chair, because your legs are so, you know, three weeks in a bed and you lose your muscle strength. So anyway, um, it was quite a discipline and just to slow down enough and be patient and be kind to the body because my God, what it went through, you know, it's like sh total shock. And my hair started to fall out from the shock. I didn't know that was a symptom. You know, the follicles get shocked. Um, so, you know, and it happens in stages. And then after two or two and a half months, I could drive again carefully. And, um, you know, things just got added back in slowly. Um, so so that's, that's the first part of it anyway, <laughs> the, the drama of it. So with that, let's take a break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors. This is Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, and we're learning about how to recover from open heart surgery. Penny Pierce, author of Frequency and a total of 10 books. As a medical intuitive healer, I find that when we are intelligent, we are open to healing energy from all kinds of people, including medical professions, professionals. And so many people who go into holistic healing, they don't want to go to the doctor. But there is no doubt that there are some conditions 
that only a surgeon can help us with, right? And they're the doctors and the nurses who dedicate their lives to helping others, we appreciate them and we appreciate their knowledge and their wisdom and everything they can contribute to us. So we are talking about how to recover from open heart surgery and your surgery. It sounds like it was by now it was six months ago, right? Almost. Yeah. Almost yeah. six months ago. Yeah. So is in your recovery um, and we, again, we value the surgeons and we, you know, there are times when you absolutely need pain medication. What are some of the natural methods that have helped you the most to recover from open heart surgery? Yeah, well, I agree with you that um, uh, I think we need a combination of natural healing and, and energy work and all those things, as well as you know, regular medicine and, and experts in these various specialties. Uh, because what I learned too, was that everything is connected to everything else, you know, like my hair connected to the heart and the lungs were connected and the, you know, like everything um, goes up and down. And I had damage to my kidneys and liver from the cardiogenic shock from not getting enough blood. So that was, a, you know, everything had to come back. Uh, but I've always taken vitamin supplements. And so that, so some of them I couldn't take with the medication I had to hold off on because there's, you know, interactions. But as soon as I could, I started adding back in things that would reduce inflammation. And, um, and I had a big backslide at the end of June and July when it was very, very hot here in Florida and humid. And, um, I started to not be able to breathe and I was getting really dizzy, um, almost like passing out dizzy um, and extremely winded. And I couldn't get through to my doctor. And, it, and then July 4th happened and they were all gone. And so it was got almost five weeks where I was in this really bad state. Um, and finally, I did get through to them and we did a, another echocardiogram, which is like a heart ultrasound and they measure everything. It takes a long time. And, and they found out that the ejection fraction, which as I said before, was the amount of blood that gets out to the organs in the body. Uh, normally it should be 50 to 70%. Mine had gone down to 15%. And I, you know, so they didn't know exactly what that, why that was, unless it was a virus or something. And I had a bronchial cough, so it might have been inflammation. I don't know, you know, it's, it's what, what all. But um, so then I went in and they gave me um, the first part of, you know, there are a kind of a group of heart meds that they work with in different ways. They do different things. So I got the first three and got a little bit of a, like prednisone is a steroid thing that helped, that really helped the lung airways open up. Right. And then with those drugs, I was back to my normal energy within a week. Right. Now let's, here we are at the natural healing show for UK health radio. And one point that I want to point out is that whenever you're on any medication, for um, an important reason, such as you just had open heart surgery, you need to work with a professional to reevaluate all your supplements. Because even things like fish oil, fish oil is a great supplement. It helps with all kinds of conditions, but is it is a blood thinner. And you want to reevaluate all your supplements, including the ones that you have been taking for a while, maybe helpful for your heart. So as a medical intuitive healer, there are some basic things that I would continue. So if I have a client who's recovering from open heart surgery, I'm going to want them to do 20 ounces of juices or smoothies every day. So this would be green leafy vegetables, celery juice. Uh, and part of that is that the, one of the things we know, the phytochemicals are in the pith the seeds and the fiber of fruits and vegetables. So we, I always talk about good, better, best, all right? So good is juices that you buy from the store, 
best is smoothies that you blend in a Vitamix or Blendtec at home. So for example, if you can grind up an avocado seed, the avocado seed is the avocado, not just avocado, but the seed itself has incredible fiber that's beneficial from the heart. A lot of people don't realize that okra, uh, and I grew up in the South, we grew up eating fried okra, not ideal, no, nothing fried after heart surgery, but okra has a special fiber that is very helpful for reducing arterial plaque. So where I would start with somebody recovering from open heart surgery is with juices and smoothies. The other thing that I would want them to do is to really work on their hydration and drinking high quality water. I would want them to be on alkaline water, which has minerals in it, because if you're mineral deficient and many people with heart problems are mineral deficient and if you're mineral deficient your body pulls minerals out of your heart and your bones so i would be drinking a high quality alkaline water because if you're dehydrated that actually affects your blood volume so penny pierce in addition to being a good patient and following the advice of your medical doctors what sort of natural things did you do to help you recover from open heart surgery. Yeah, I agree that, well, even things like turmeric and other things they wouldn't let me have, you know, they, there yes. are things that are really healthy at one point, but then they act against the, the need of the body after this. So you have to be open-minded about that. Um, but I was just drawn to um, almost like, having yogurt with a lot of those kinds of high colored fruits in it and walnuts and like granola. But with one of the drugs, um, you can't eat it. You can't eat fiber with it because it bonds to the fiber and then it doesn't do its job. So an hour before or an hour after, and then I have to keep track of all the times, but, um, yeah, I, I just was drawn towards smaller portions, cleaner food, stop drinking wine and coffee. I just didn't want it. And so water and tea and some juices um, and uh, a little bit of proteins, chicken and fish. And, yes. you know, just a common sense to me. Now let's talk stuff. about why not coffee and why not wine. So inflammation whenever you have pain in the body you have an inflammatory response now 70 percent of inflammation begins in your gut and if you've had surgery and people have cut you open whether it's your heart or any kind of surgery whether you cut open you're going to have inflammation and as you can reduce your inflammation that you're going to reduce your overall pain so I came up with a saying a long time ago, which is nobody in their right mind eats cats. Nobody in their right mind eats cats. That I came up with something that's easy to remember. So what are cats? Caffeine. So that's your black coffee. Even decaffeinated coffee has caffeine in it. That's your colas, that's your black teas. So caffeine raises inflammation, alcohol, right? People talk about, oh, red wine is good for you. Well, not after you've had open heart surgery. So any kind of alcohol is going to raise your inflammation level. Tobacco, um, cigars, cigarettes, all of that stuff. We already understand that's really bad for your heart. And sugar, sugar is very pro-inflammatory. And then what I refer to as the friends of cats, which are fried foods and gluten. And you may not be gluten intolerant, you may not be celiac, but wheat products are highly pro-inflammatory. So when you're wanting to reduce pain in your body and you're wanting to heal from open heart surgery, I would recommend somebody go on an anti-inflammatory diet. And again, this can be, you know, what you put in your mouth. If you think about the quantities of food that you take versus you know, people put a lot of faith in their supplements or even their medications. You eat more food <laughs> than you take in these tiny pills. And then, so you want to reduce your caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, sugar, fried foods, and gluten. 
And then you want to increase your anti-inflammatory foods. So what are anti-inflammatory foods? We talked about water and all your fruits and vegetables. You mentioned liking berries. Berries are high in anthocyanins, which are water-soluble antioxidants. So Penny Pierce, in addition to really being careful with your diet and reevaluating your supplements, what other forms of natural healing have helped you recover from open heart surgery? I would say that, um, you know, I almost couldn't meditate. Um, so, but really being quiet was very helpful. Not trying to force myself to be productive, give it time and, and, relax and and do a little bit of outside work if I could and um, you know just give myself a break really yes. you know and um, and just paying attention wait you know I weigh myself and take all the vital statistics every day I keep a journal temperature heart rate blah 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 you know write it all down watch what's going on and I think that's an important thing to become conscious of how different things affect your blood pressure, for instance. You know, love that you talk yeah. about being quiet because one of the things that we know from a brain wave perspective is your body heals when you go into alpha state. So, what am I talking about? So, you have a brain and your brain makes brain waves. So, right now we're awake in theory. So when you're awake, you're in a beta brainwave state. And then right below that is an alpha state, which is where you're awake, but you're relaxed. And then below that is theta. And then below that is delta. So delta brainwaves are very slow. They're what you go into when you sleep. But when we're in high beta, which is what we're in when we're anxious or angry, then your body is producing a lot of stress hormones, cortisol, and then your body doesn't heal when you're anxious <laughs> or angry. Right. <laughs> right. Or scared. Or scared. Yeah. So everything that we can do to relax is incredibly helpful. So um, during the time that you were recovering from open heart surgery, and I know that it's been less than six months from you for you, did you receive any energy healing work? Just recently. Yeah. Um, and that really, that helped me tune in. See, I, I'm used to accessing a lot of higher information and, um, and translating it into courses and writings and speaking and all that stuff. But I was not able to access as much during the healing time. And that was frustrating to me but I just let it be and it's starting to come back because I think you know a lot of energy is get drawn out of the brain to work with the rest of the system for a while and um, so I you know I guess I had identified a lot with my mental prowess you know and um, and I was just joking how I in the hospital I got I was up all night practically because they keep coming in to do things to you so I was watching TV and there was nothing on except these weird reality TV shows, right. you know, like like a below deck down under or, you know, whatever these ones were, the gold rush people and all this. And so I just kept watching those and it was like inane, you know, but like, um, I don't know what it was, almost like a weird kind of meditation, you know? Anyway, so that is coming, I am coming back now, you know, and, and my um, perception is good. And it's, I think that during the surgery, I think that I expanded out, I can almost sense that I accessed a different level of consciousness at that point. And I think there was a huge shift. I think that was the reason, because it, like I said, it was not on my radar but I always had the feeling that an, an expansion of my work was coming or that like if I had 50% more of myself in my ball, you know, what would I turn into? Mm. And um, 
I think I did that in the surgery, but like it, it couldn't all get realized physically or mentally at once. So I'm getting little snippets of things coming in and insights and visions and, and things um, so and since, ideas. You since, know. since you're, as part of your recovery, have you received Reiki or craniosacral therapy or pranic healing or any other form of energy healing? Yes. Yes. And what kind of energy healing did you receive? Well, it didn't have a name, but a friend of mine's like an incredible healer where her hands get hot and, and she's a medium and so forth. But that was very effective. And the guidance she got was very effective. Uh, but I've started um, at a certain point going to cardio rehab, which is a big gym over at the hospital where, you know, they put a heart monitor and do your blood pressure and you'd run, you work on the machines and then every week. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so it's an intensive program of um, building strength and and um, getting oxygen, you know, and all that. So that's helped a lot. And then I started getting a series of um, massages, deep tissue massages to help because this muscles in here mm -hmm. are just like a rock, you know, because they're all in shock still, you know. So I've been getting doing things to loosen everything up and run more blood and help the scar heal. So one of the things that we know is that uh, from natural healing is that anytime you have an injury, whether it's a car wreck or a surgery where the muscles get cut, the fascia, the connective tissue remains somewhat fluid for about six months. And then after six months, things tend to harden. Mm -hmm. So if I was recommending somebody after open heart surgery, I would recommend that they work with a highly trained massage therapist because mm -hmm. you don't want to actually massage on your scar. No. Um, here at the Natural Healing Show, I actually did a, an entire show about how to heal from scars. So if you're listening, you may want to refer back to that show because every place you have had a scar, the nerves to that area don't work as well. So at a certain point, uh, you want to actually go in and, and heal the scar it's, itself. Um, and things like helichrysum, which is an essential oil, is extremely helpful for healing scars. But I would not apply that within the first six months. Now, with that, let's take a break and listen to another message from one of our commercial sponsors. This is Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author, and we're learning about how to recover from open heart surgery. Penny Pierce, author of Frequency. So as you know, here we are at the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. We have major vortexes of energy in the body, which he, we in natural healing refer to as chakras. And one of the most important chakras, they're all important, is our heart chakra. And you talked about receiving energy healing from your friend, okay, who does energy healing. So... Um, and whenever we have open heart surgery, that has a major effect of the energy running through this heart chakra. In Qigong and Tai Chi, they also talk about Don Chen's. So similar but different energy system. And we talk about our upper Don Chen, our middle Don Chen, and our lower Don Chen. Lower Don Chen is where we store energy. Middle Don Chen, which is at the heart, is where you live the life your life from. So if we don't have good energy in our heart, we don't have a lot of energy to live our life. And then your upper Danchen, the energy around your head, that's your spiritual energy. So after you received energy healing from your friend, what was the difference that you felt in your heart area? Uh, I'm not sure I, I 
uh, could feel it in a localized part of my body. It felt to me like my my whole aura was um, clear, mm -hmm. like like um, spacious mm -hmm. or like fresh air, like I wasn't holding anything. And um, that that's like a feeling of a kind of freedom. Uh, uh, almost like if I had expanded during the surgery, this state allowed me to kind of seep into the knowledge base or the sense of greater love that was there. Um, so it wasn't, I did, I wasn't able to track it very specifically. So one of the things I, I do energy healing myself and a good energy healer is going to work not just on an area that's affected by surgery, but they're going to clear your energy field, right? Just mm -hmm. like taking an energy shower, right? Clear everything, right? And balance all the major energy centers. So you talked about cardiac rehab. What does cardiac rehab look like? What do you do in cardiac rehab and how has that helped you? Yeah, it, you start off, um, you work with three different machines, like a treadmill, a bike, um, an arms thing, you know, where you go forward and back. And it's an hour. So they take your blood pressure and, and a heart rate and then hook you up to a heart monitor that keeps track of the EKG throughout the whole thing. And um, after working each machine, you go back and get checked again. So there's a lot of measurement and a record is kept for these, I think I have 36 sessions. So, um, so it's a discipline, which uh, I like. And I was not a, a big athletic, you know, go to the gym rah rah person before <laughs> it's just like i'm doing housework and yard work and physical activity uh, but i'm liking it and i i can see progress that i'm getting stronger and then i up the thing and we do more minutes we do harder stuff um every couple of times so um yeah i mean it's and and everybody seems to really like it that i've talked to <laughs> you know um, so I'm combining that with the like 30 minute massages now, a deep tissue work that, um, some little work on the muscles and a lot more work on the back. And, and I have an area where I had nerve damage because they tried to put the thing, whatever that is, catheter in the groin and they missed, mm -hmm. they hit the nerve. And then it has a lot of pain in my, my thigh and down to my knee. That is healing slowly, um, but it helps, I think, to work a little bit softly on it to open some circulation there. And I love that you're talking about massage because one of the things that we know about the fascia system, which is the connective tissue, the fascial system is the only system that's really connected to every other cell in the body. So when we experience pain, one of the things that we talk about in natural healing, where you feel the pain is not necessarily the cause of the pain. So you may have a pain in your right side, but the cause of it may be somewhere else. And when I'm teaching yoga, the way I like to explain connective tissue is if you think about a t-shirt, all right? And if I pull on the top of my t-shirt, okay, that can affect the rest of the t-shirt all the way down. And that's how the web of your connective tissue. So I love that you're getting massage. So Penny Pierce, as you reflect on your process of recovering from open heart surgery, and in addition to the wonderful doctors and nurses and the medications that you received, what do you feel has been the most, nat most helpful natural healing approaches? Uh, I think, um, diet and, um, walking, I have walked my dog, you know, and again, it's not like a heavy duty, um, pushy type activity. It's calm. And, and yet I breathe, you know, I get oxygen and, um, I can't say I'm being like super metaphysical at this point with 
healers and things like that, because I'm sort of trusting myself and I'm, I trust my own, I am the soul, you know, and I'm here, I'm making this body. I did this. I created this. And so I'm looking for the good sense in it. Like why, what did I do and why am I getting this and what am I learning from it? And what is it all about in a bigger sense? So I'm journaling about that. I'm, I'm getting interesting little visions and, and things. Um, for instance, one day I was just sitting on the sofa and I started, I saw my life review like you would when you die. And it looked like a little film strip that went off to my left, you know, and uh, and I could look all through it and all these moments. And I could zoom in my focus into any one moment and I was in it. And it was real then. I mean, it was then, <laughs> you know, and I saw myself. I was very involved. And then I saw the sequencing of every Thing from when I was a little teeny kid and my mother liked to talk about reincarnation and I was like yes yes I understand you know <laughs> and um and that led to the next opening and then the next that led to my next insight and my next opportunity and everything fell together in this perfect sequencing and I was thinking wow the engineering on this is so amazing and I did it me, the soul, plus all the other souls, we all got together and helped create this pathway. And it's my story, you know? And um, I thought I was amazed by it and I loved it. And then I thought, well, I don't really care about it that much. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's not me. It's, it's me and I'm this like kind of white hole in the present moment where stuff is emerging and it, it might be very surprising, it might be new, but I'm gonna feel and listen really well to what's coming because I don't have to have um, a big noticeable identity, you know, like it, it's a whole shift of identity that came and that's a part of it, you know. I think a lot of people actually are dealing with looking at identity right now, whether it's to go out and get branded and have a new career or whether it's to let go of what you've had so far in order to allow something else to come in. So that was one of the things, but there've been a number of these kind of interesting um, events. So Penny Pierce, as a medical intuitive healer, when I do my medical intuitive readings, I always look at what's happening on the physical level. You know what that is, the body. Then there's at the energy level, which is the chakras, the acupuncture system and the breast. The emotional level, which is our mm -hmm. feelings, our mind, the our thoughts and beliefs, and finally the soul level. And every illness that we ever have, every disease is always happening on all five levels. For you personally, on a soul level, on a spiritual level, what do you think open heart surgery has been about for you? You know, I've been writing a new book on money. And transformation. And part of what I came to in that was that gratitude and generosity are so incredibly important and they fit together. And when you go into those states in a deep way and really understand what they're all about, um, it is they are states in which the soul can come through. They allow the soul to express itself without distortion. And so I remember um, right before the, the event that I chose, I made a clear decision that I was going to increase my ability with generosity and, and uh, gratitude. And that um, it, it, I didn't want to have any more uh, deprivation thinking, right? That I really am lucky. And I just held that, well, uh, what, you know, a week later, my heart opens up, you know, and I think that I was almost saying to myself, this is my new path to be really fully involved in the open hearted way of being, 
-hmm. you know, where, where I, the soul and body me, the personality, and I come through and I don't, I can bring through anything, you know, and, and there can be, I mean, I don't know what the, I'll read the Akashic records. I'll do instantaneous healing. I don't know. <laughs> it's possible. All kinds of things are possible as we keep accelerating on the planet, you know? So, um, I think that was a catalyst and um, there, another little funny anecdote was that I had gone to the cardiologist and he said, well, I feel like I'm obliged to say what like the worst possible scenario is, you know, and if you had AFib, uh, you know, you could die right there with, with a fibrillation. So we would have to put in a defibrillator. It's like a little thing in, in your and it would shock your heart back into rhythm. And I'm like, oh my God. And then I started getting this feeling that this thing is going to be with me the rest of my life. And oh my God, I'm going to die early. And I thought I was going to have a really long life. And then, oh, you know, and um, so I left feeling a bit depressed um, or subdued as my sister likes to say. <laughs> um, and so, so then what ensued was I had gotten a new pair of shoes that were a little too tight. They were the slip-in kind. So I had to use a shoehorn to get into them and then they were comfortable. Um, so I was doing that, I was wearing the shoes and I had the shoehorn on my bathroom counter. So I was going to put my shoes on and it wasn't there. But well, maybe I put it in the closet or maybe I put it somewhere else, but I, I didn't find it. So I'm going to rehab, to cardio rehab and I decide suddenly, oh, I'm going to take a book and um, headphones and a thing in this, and I need a jacket. And, and I, so I need a bigger bag. Oh, I'll go get my black canvas bag because I had on black pants and I wanted to match, you know, and it was stored in my office on one of those little belt hanger things, but down under three other bags. And I did not, had not used this in a at least a year. So I threw all my stuff in there and I went over to rehab and I'm rooting around to get the headphone things out. And there's the shoehorn in the bag. And it was like, oh, you know, I've had this happen before where spirit does phenomenal things around me occasionally. And so I know <laughs> it was not there. I, and I didn't have another shoehorn just like, I didn't have, that was the only one. So there it is. And it dematerialized and rematerialized. And I thought right then it was like a, a spirit or whatever the, it is, beings were really helping me say, look, Penny, anything is possible. You can heal. You can do almost anything. So just let this be, you know, an inspiration for you. So just now my my shoehorn is is on an altar as my new power object. <laughs> So final question, Penny Pierce, as you know, many people experience depression and anxiety after open heart surgery. Um, just the pain medications alone, Oxycontin, which is oh, yeah. necessary when they cut your bone open, can make you depressed. How did you cope with the depression and anxiety that came up after open heart surgery? I didn't have any. Um <laughs> Uh, I just kept saying, I'm really lucky. Hmm. And and in a way, my sister was there with me every day. And that was an incredible stroke of luck. And um, I didn't stay on the the painkiller, the Oxycontin, whatever it was, I don't know, uh, for more than like two days or three days. And I just took acetaminophen after that. So um, it was just too weird, you know, with the hallucinations and everything. <laughs> and um, yeah, so then I just started thinking about what comes next, what's next, what's next. And I tried to just stay in that um, receptive place and the gratitude, generosity place, you know. That is such a beautiful and message. You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. 
You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. We've been listening to the beloved author, Penny Pierce, and I am so happy that your heart is healed and <laughs> find out more about Penny Pierce and her wonderful work at pennypierce.com. And remember, when you have to go through open heart surgery, you can do both. You can receive natural healing and work with your doctors. And by integrating both, you can experience profound and wonderful transformation. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time.